in John chapter 1, uh, look into, starting in verse number 29, it says, The next day Jesus, uh, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man, which is preferred, preferred before me, for he was before me. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be here and to preach your word. I'm thankful for your presence that I've felt. God, I pray you'll let me preach in the Spirit of God today. Lord, our desire is to see you lifted up and to see someone saved. God bless in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach on this word, Behold. And I want to preach on this thought, things that you need to behold. That word behold means to know, to be aware of, to consider, or to understand. And we're living in a day when people are blindly trusting in things that they don't know nothing about. Right. They're, they're preparing uh, to retire. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. If you can retire, go ahead. But here's the problem. The most important thing that they have is themselves, their soul. They're not preparing. They're not beholding what's ahead of them. They're not beholding the way to escape this place called hell. They think if they can just stick their head in the sand, all of these problems will go away. But I want to show you, first of all, what did John say? He said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, these Jews didn't understand what he was saying to them because they were used to a lamb as you would see standing out in the field, a little uh, hairy, furry little creature. And that was their process that never took away sin. All it did is it forwarded it to the next year. And every year they would bring these, there's thousands of them that were slain to just make a, an atonement so that they could be right for another year. They didn't understand what John was saying. They said, you need to behold. And what he done is he pointed to the person who would remove their sin. They didn't understand that. You and I take for granted. We know because that's all we've ever known is the fact that God takes away our sin and that we can pillow our head tonight and have peace with God that Brother Jordan was talking about simply because John said, there he is. There's the Lamb of God who will take away your sin. They didn't understand. Not only did he point to the person when he said, behold, but he pointed to the purpose. He said he taketh away you know what you might have many things on your plate that you want to do there may be sports activities that you like to participate in there may be uh, just different things that you like to do Miss Sunny she loves to sew hallelujah go on with it uh, I, don't want, I, I don't like no needles and threads amen but that's what she loves that's good but I want to say this today Jesus had one purpose he had one focus and that was to remove your sin to look thousands of years ahead of Calvary and John the Baptist said behold the Lamb of God that his purpose is to take away your sin now look at this it says to take away the sin of the world you know it might be that you could take part of the sin away but to be able to remove all sin now do you see what he says here he said that he taketh away the sin not the sins sin is the sin of unbelief not all these other sins you have to have this part dealt with of your unbelief like brother Jordan was talking about today when he was talking about unbelief you know having you know knowing that God is able and capable of doing it see that's why we have so many works related uh, what they call Christianity I'll give them that but I don't believe it you know they, they want to behave well I believe you ought to they want to do good uh, but now here's another point when he said behold the Lamb of God he talks about how much power he has you know there's power power wonder working power in the precious blood of Jesus I tell you what the night that I got saved I was a filthy low down rotten sinner but when I got up I was a child of God why just in a matter of seconds the power that God has in his word and in his blood and in his son he saved and transformed my life forever just in a matter of seconds I'll be honest with you I think he saved me before I ever knelt down why 
because he he's the one doing it not me it's not they say well you need to say a prayer it ain't in a prayer it's in a purpose it's in a person he said behold the lamb of god that taketh away when you think of a lamb you think of two things or i do of humble and purity you know what when you see jesus he's holy there's nothing about him unholy he don't think unholy thoughts you know my problem is not always what i do my problem is what i think hmm? you know a lot of times i don't do if i did everything i thought i would really be messed up but see god here's jesus he don't think nothing when he ran those people out of there uh, for selling stuff in the church you know what he did he did that like brother jordan said with righteousness he said you're not going to do this to my father's house wasn't angry he didn't you know when i get angry i i, I want to bust them up i don't I'll be honest with you I just bust them up and forget about it you know how about you you know it's hard for me to separate sin and sinners but you need to do that Jesus has no problems you know do you ever think about how that Jesus would come to someone who blasphemed him think about how he saved Paul a person who blasphemed him who was killing his children and he saved him and called him I'm amazed at how God would even do that because if you look at the history of kings and Jesus is a king when, Jesus, when the king would come in they would annihilate that family the family that was the, the past king they knew they didn't have a prayer that's why Mephibosheth was hidden because he knew when David came there wasn't going to be no good news but because David was so much like Jesus you know what he did he said I'll let you sit at my table put your feet when, when Mephibosheth put his feet up under the table he looked just like everybody else he didn't look like no cripple why because I want to tell you something I looked like the world I, I talked like the world but when I got saved I slide my feet up under the table of God and I'm just like everybody else this morning again why because there's been a change in my life because of the Lamb of God. Amen. It ain't me, it's Him. Behold, we need to consider this person, this Lamb of God. What a price He paid for you to be here. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. I say I don't usually do this, but this is what God put it in my heart. So some things that we need to behold. We need to think about some stuff. I'm telling you, I, I, Brother Jordan, I was listening to the Christian radio the other day, and on the news they said, this is what they said, 37% of the young people that have an affectionate love for Christ don't deem it necessary to go to church. That ain't much affection. Uh, I thought a Christian was supposed to love the things Christ loved. Uh, I, I, I may be messed up on that doctrine, but I think it... I think that you ought to love what he loves. Amen. I, I'm, I'm not, you know. <laughs> now listen, listen at this. There might be somebody here today that's lost. It says in verse 2 of chapter 6, it says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You know what today is? If you're here and lost, today's your day. Hmm? You say, well, I'm going to wait till I get older. You don't have that promise. Uh, Brother Ray, you remember Brother Benny Hatfield? You remember him? I went to hear Brother Benny preach, and he told the story of an old preacher down south. Uh, said he was preaching, and these three boys come in, young teenage boys, and when they left, uh, the preacher was standing at the door, and uh, they was kind of being smart Alex, and said, well, preacher, how far is it? How far is it to hell you was talking about? The preacher dropped his head with tears in his eyes and said, I don't know. Shut the door, everybody was gone. And within five minutes, he heard a big crash. And he drove down the road. All three of these boys laid out of the car, all three of them dead. And with tears in his eyes, he looked at them and boys, he said, it's a mile and a half. It's a mile and a half to hell. If you're here today and lost, it may not even be that far, Brother Jordan. It might be 50 steps. It might be, might, might be five miles. You know what? Today is your day if you're here and lost. Behold the day of salvation. You don't have a promise of tomorrow. All you got is today. This is it. There ain't nothing left. You know tomorrow's gone. And tomorrow, and to, uh, to, to yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never come. You don't have that promise. 
Huh? The only day available for you is today. I, I was uh, li- uh, talking to Brother Dean Gooch one time. He was telling me about visiting uh, a, a man in the hospital, and this, this was when they had the oxygen tents. And he said, he raised that tent up, and he said to that fellow, he said, Sir, wouldn't you like to be saved today? He said, No. He said, I believe I'll wait uh, uh, a little later on. And he never lived to, to leave the hospital. You know what he was? He didn't take the available time that God gave him. And there's so many people squandering the time that God gives them. Today is the day you need to be saved if you're lost. You know why? First of all, this is the greatest life you could ever live. Uh, there is no better life than being a Christian. If you're here and say you're saved and you think there's a better life, there is no better life. There is no better life than knowing Jesus. Someone you can talk to. Someone you can walk with. Someone you can help. Someone that's a help to you. The greatest people in the world are Christian people. I'm not talking about church people. I'm talking about Christians. A lot of people go to church ain't Christians. Uh, ain't that right, Brother Clint? You, go to, you can go to church with a lot of people that ain't Christians. Uh, today is the available but you know look what he said he said today is the accepted time when will God save you he'll accept you today hey. let me say this brother Donald when you got saved there wasn't nobody wanted you saved more than God hey. Amen. he didn't want you saved no more than you did right. he wanted you more than you wanted to be saved right. yeah. uh, ain't it good that you don't have to worry You don't have to ponder and think about, uh, well, would God save me today? Guarantee it. Guarantee it, Brother Phil. He'll save anybody. I don't care if you're the biggest drunk. I don't care if you're the biggest blasphemer. I don't care if you're the biggest harlot in the the state of Kentucky. God will save you. Why? Because today is the accepted day. He cannot lie to us. He told us today, if you'd come to Him, He'd save you. Brother Brian, that's when he saved you. He saved you when you came to him. He would have saved you before that if you'd have came to him. Uh, ain't that good? I'm glad that he's still in the saving business. Even though I don't get to see it much. Uh, I'd love to see somebody get saved, wouldn't you, Brother Jordan? It, boy, it, hey, I'd shut the preaching off right now to get to see somebody get saved. Why? Because it's the most important thing that can ever happen to you. But we place so little value on it. Huh? You know what, Brother Jordan? The church has bought into this. Well, you know what? You, you need to make a living. You ought to try to invest in something and, make, and have all kinds of 401. That's a bunch of garbage. No shouting there, huh? You know why? Because you bought into it. I want to tell you, 100 years from now, Brother Ray, your 401k won't mean diddly to you. Uh, but I tell you what, going to heaven and taking everybody you can will. Uh, don't matter what car you drive to church. Uh, don't matter. Uh, you can pull that pit here on a swing 10 speed and be just as right with God as somebody in an El Dorado. You know why? Because God will save the poor. I'm glad He saves poor people. He, I'm glad He saves short people. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to have a head full of hair to get saved. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. I'm glad, I'm glad that's the way God does it. He, he, he saved an old East Kentucky hillbilly that didn't know nothing about the Bible, didn't know nothing about God. Didn't know. You know why? Because He saved me. When I went to church, Brother Phil, I know people won't believe this, but I had purpose in my heart that night I'd get saved Amen. and even when the preacher gave the call I, I kind of said no no and then the Holy Spirit just kept saying yeah yeah and I said no no he said yeah yeah and you know what we both said yeah yeah and I come down to the altar you know why because today is the day today is the day you can get saved if you want to get saved if you're listening on the television you can drop down right there on the couch and get saved why because today's your day I'm glad you don't have to make all kinds of whatever, you know. I, I've heard people say this to me when I'd witness to them. Well, you know, I tried that religious stuff. Well, quit trying. There's more people going to hell through the eyes of religion than, in, than they are hell's angels. <laughs> uh, there's more people dooming themselves to hell, trusted in some kind of religious form, them bikers and all kinds of them guys that you think, boy, they're just wicked as the devil. 
There's nothing more wicked than religious people. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. Huh? Huh? I, I, I watched the uh, testimony of this guy. He was an ex Amish. Look him up. Glenn Yoder was his name. He was crippled. And he said the Amish community, this is what they consider a man to be. He's valued at his work ability. If you cannot work, you have no value. And he was crippled. He had polio. Uh, he said, well, the day that I got born again, he said, they told me you cannot come here anymore. You cannot come to your mom and daddy's funeral. You cannot come and be around your brothers and sisters. That's religious. Yep. Right. Yep. Hmm? I want to tell you something. Religious people can be mean as a junkyard dog. Mean as a junkyard dog. Huh? I'll say this. The Catholic Church, huh? You know what they do? They think they get a pass because I'm Catholic. Let me say this. I don't care what you are. And God don't either. God don't care. You can be as lost as a goose in a hailstorm and be a Baptist by name. It's not about names. It's about birth. Uh, now this next one, I'm preparing for no shouting. Amen. Amen. I'm prepared because I didn't like it when I got it. James chapter number 3. Look, it says in verse 5, Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that defile the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Look at this, what God says about the tongue. For every kind of beast, listen to that, and birds, serpents, things of the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. Ain't that amazing? That's why you can go down to Sea World and they get out there and swim with them uh, orcas, you know what I'm saying? Now they can go ahead and do that. I ain't doing that. If I can't reel it in on my fishing pole, I ain't swimming with it. Look what he says about the tongue. It's out of control. You know what? I want to say this. Do you know there's more, been more church problems because of that little thing sticking in between your teeth? Huh? Let me show you uh, an experience I had. I had a family, believe it or not, they didn't like me. I know you find that hard to believe. And their son-in-law, he liked me. He said, Preacher, they wear you out every Sunday. Huh? I, said, I didn't say a word. The day, the day, the day, 30 years later, Brother Jordan, the one girl, she's dead, died at 54. Her mother died. They, that, that family, they had two boys, none of them going to church. You better watch it. You better watch what you say about these people. You especially better watch what you say about this man that stands up here. You say, well, he ain't special. Not to you, he ain't. If, if he wasn't special, God wouldn't have put him here. Uh, you better watch letting that tongue, especially in front of your kids, because you'll get a curse on them kids, and they'll never get over it. And he'll curse their grandkids. That tongue, boy, it's always wagging. Uh, it's always saying. Did you see what it said? It boasts his great things. You better not let your mouth overload what you're capable of taking care of. Huh? You ever heard those saying, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all? That's what you need to do. Uh, you say, well, I'm right. You might be right, but just because you're right don't mean you need to say it. Uh, if I said what I thought about everybody, you know, they'd all be mad at me. Huh? Fat people in spandex. I, I, that's, you know, I say, you need to, don't be wearing that. 
But I don't say that. Huh? I'm just saying, you can't say everything that you think. Why? Because it ain't very wise. It ain't needful. I'm going to tell you this. I probably shouldn't. Back years ago, where I work, I was delivering milk to Buskin Bakery. They had 14 Buskins up in Cincinnati area. And I was going to the main one, delivering a bunch of milk. And they went and got the guy. He was the head baker. He said, follow me. I'll tell you where to put it. We walked back there, and there was a dozen, two dozen women. And here's what he said. He said, hey, buddy, haven't you seen... Ain't these the ugliest bunch of women you've ever seen in your life? And I looked at him and I thought, this guy is retarded. Huh? That's, see, that's one of those things. I didn't. I said, but I ain't, I ain't talking to you. First of all, that ain't right. Second of all, I got to deal with them women. And I don't want them flogging me when I go back. See, sometimes just because you think it and just because it might be true, you don't need to say it. Why? Because your tongue will get you in trouble. Uh, it's out of control. But your tongue is contaminated. You know what he says? It's unruly evil. You know what? You, it's a whole lot easier to say bad things. And we like bad news. Uh, we like it when somebody, oh, did you hear about Jim? He got his arms cut off. And we're just like, man, I can't believe it. And just tickled all the way down to the core. You know why? Because our, our tongue is contaminated. You know what? I'm trying to tell you, you better behold what comes out of your mouth, especially if you've got little ones at home. Huh? Don't talk about your church problems. Don't ch talk about people at, from, at church at, in front of your little ones. First of all, you shouldn't be talking about them anyhow. Huh? You say, well, I don't like their dress, so what? You ain't wearing it. Right? It ain't none of my business. I don't care what your dress looks like. It ain't none of my business. Huh? See, my wife says, you like this dress? I say, yes. It's easier to lie than to explain why. I'm just saying, there is some, some leeway when it, and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen, brother. Uh, look at this. <laughs> hey, praise God. Look at its course. It's set on fire of hell. Boy, God is comparing your tongue to the fire that's in hell. Huh? Ain't that... Boy, I tell you what, that's, that's something to, to think about. You know, Brother Jordan, I don't imagine that any of us... If, if, I, if I started saying to you, tell me what you think hell is like. Tell me what hell... There's nobody could come in here and tell us exactly what this place is. But you know what God said? Your tongue is like that. Huh? Ain't that something? We need to watch what we say, folks. We need to watch. You know, have you ever heard this, Brother Bob? Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's the biggest lie I ever told. Words do hurt. They do hurt. Huh? And I want to say this. The, the cruelest people on planet Earth are children. They can be brutal. They can be brutal, man. When you go to school, they, and yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, they can be brutal, man. Look at First John. This this one you can shout on. Chapter three. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called. Listen to this. Listen at this. Listen at this. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. You know what? We need to know, understand, and be aware, Brother James, how much God loves you. Not how much He loves Brother Jordan. Not how much He loves Brother Donald. But how much He loves you. He didn't go to Calvary just for them. He went specially for you. He went specially for you, Brother Josh. Everyone, this is personal with him. Uh, see, see, here's, here's his love. His love is proven. Hmm? His love is proven. 
Don't, you don't have to tell, uh, I'm going to say this, and I do this, but I do tell my wife I love her, but I don't have to. I prove it. I prove it to her. Hmm? I do. Number one, I'd be faithful to her. For 43 years, I've been faithful to her, and she's been faithful to me. Hmm? This crowd that says that they can go and cheat around on their spouse and say they love them, that's a lie from the devil. There is no such love as that. That's the same way as they say, I love Jesus and never come to his house. I don't believe that. Huh? I don't believe that. And if they ask me, I'll tell them, but I'm going to try to zip my lip. So I love the Lord, or they'll be gone six or eight months and come back and stand up and testify, I love the Lord and I've saved 20. I've seen 35 saved. Yeah, right. I don't believe it. Because love is better proven. It's good for somebody to say, Christian, I love you. But to prove it. Prove it. Jesus walked up Calvary. He didn't go up there like some whiny, a little snotty-nosed kid. He went up there, walked up Calvary, and laid down on the cross, and they drove nails in his hands and his feet. And he died. Why? Willingly to prove his love for everybody that's in this building and everybody out there in the world. His love has been proven. You ought to behold that. You ought to sit in amazement and say, Brother Phil, I cannot believe that God would love somebody like me like that. Amen. Hey, man, that God would reach down into the mud hole. Now, I know some of you probably have never been out in sin. My wife was like that. Huh? she never been out in the world. She don't know what it's like. I'll tell her about some of these, uh, a song that we'll go somewhere and they'll be playing, and she said, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I said, I used to have their album. <laughs> uh, 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 I ain't bragging. It's just the truth. Did you know this? His love was not only proven, but His love was permanent. Yeah. Ain't that good? Brother Donald, if you never come and stand up and give a testimony again, God will love you just as much. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right. Ain't that amazing? Now, you say, well, I, 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 I have fallen out of love with people. <laughs> I'll have to explain this. See, some people can do you so wrong. You don't want them to go to hell. But you can't have fellowship with them. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody to go to hell. But there's some people that my love for them hasn't been permanent. I know that. that, that you, I feel a little... Mm. But I'm just telling you. You have to be in a situation to where somebody does you that wrong to where you can say I, I've heard people and I don't understand this they stand up so I just love everybody well I, I can't do that because I have to know you I have to get to kind of say I might you know maybe I'm looking at it wrong I could be but God ain't like that God he'll, he'll love that fellow up on Wall Street that's stealing legally <laughs> as much as he loves that guy who's breaking and entering and Christian has to arrest him. He loves them just as much. Now listen to this. His love is privileged. You know that we are the sons of God. You know the world, they go out there, Brother Donald, and they'll count beads and Hail Mary and I love Jesus. Ain't a thing to that. You know why? Because they're not privileged. You have to be birthed. You have to be His child. You know what? When you get born again, you have a privilege that the world don't have. You're one of His. You know, you know you've got one, you've got two, and you've got three fosters in here. I'm not a foster. Sorry. I'm not. They have privileges that nobody else has in that family. You can go drive the car somewhat. I would say if I went and got it, there'd be some problems. Probably be some problems. But here's the thing I'm saying. Do you know that you can talk to God and the world can't? Yeah. Amen. Did you know that you could call out to God 
and cry out to God in the middle of the night. He's not sleeping or slumbering. You can say, I've got a problem. Why? Because you have a privilege that the world does not have. You have a privilege that God will say, I, I'll, I'll listen to you. Huh? You say, I, I, I'm going through some financial problems. God said, well, I got, you know, I, I've only got a cattle on a thousand hills. I, that's all I got. What do you need off of there? Huh? It's a privilege. See, I'm be honest with you, I'm sick and tired of us as Christians thinking the world has something on us. They're losers. Y'all, y'all, so don't say that. They're losers. Why? Because they don't know our Father. Uh, they're spinning their wheels, Brother Donald. We're just going at a steady pace right on through this life. Why? Because of this privilege of being a child of God. We're not losers. We've got the greatest Savior there is. The only Savior there is. When John said, Behold, the Lamb of God, he didn't say the Lambs of God. They've already experienced that. This person we're talking about is singular. There is nobody like Jesus. There is nobody like Him. Amen. Listen to this and I'll be closing. Revelations chapter 3. You know, I'm guilty of this myself. And I'm sure that you probably are too. You get caught up in the day-to-day. -day. You don't mean to, but you know, you're just trying to make a living and you get caught up in the plans. But listen what chapter 3 verse 11 says. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. We need to behold the Lord is coming. Don't get your roots run down so deep that you can't be plucked up when He comes back. Hmm? We need to keep our mindset that when we walk out of here today, we may not be back tonight. If you're looking for Him, you could say, this could be the day. And it could be. Say, it could be. Brother Ray, this could be the day He comes back. Huh? It could be. Y'all excited about it, I can tell. <laughs> See, why could this be the day? Because He said He's coming soon. Now, he said this 2,000 years ago. Ain't that amazing? If 2,000 years have went by, how much sooner do you think he's coming? Well, let's, let's just take what we know to be Bible. I, I was telling a, a fellow at work, I said, you know what we're seeing? We're seeing the Bible fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Uh, you know, we're surprised that all these gays have all these rights. And we're saying, I cannot believe that. Read your Bible. I can believe it. I can believe that they're walking hand in hand, male and male, uh, getting married. I can believe it. Why? Because the coming of the Lord is soon. Uh, I can believe. What bothers me is people that are straight that take sides with them. Hmm? I don't hate nobody. I hate that sin. That's an abomination to God. And there's so many Baptists that have family members that are, that are gay that they're not going to say nothing. I'm going to say something to you, friend. It don't matter who it is. If it's, your, if it's your grandson, it's still wrong. If it's my grandkid, it's still wrong. It does not matter who it is, it's still wrong. It's still sin. And it's going to be about. And he said, well, I can't believe that they're having all these wars. Well, read the Bible. We've had, we got the instruction book. It says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. That's, I can't believe all of the sicknesses going on. He said that there'd be diseases and, and all this stuff. He's told, you know what he said, Brother Christian? He said, in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasure. I couldn't tell you the times that I've went to church and my, somebody in my neighborhood, they, they'll load up a horse. I live out in the country, okay? Uh, I know you probably don't see this up here, uh, but... but they'll be going to some park to ride old silver, you know. Or they'll have their bass boat hooked up. You know why? Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I see something else that's very common in this day. Unthankful. Huh? The unthankful. See, how, do, how can you tell if people are unthankful? 
They're always thinking they deserve more. You ever, you ever see people like that? Well, I tell you what, we, we, we deserve to make more. Huh? You know what you ought to be? You ought to be thankful for what you got. Huh? You could be living over somewhere where they don't even have electricity. Huh? Honduras or somewhere like that. You've been privileged to be raised. And Americans are the biggest bunch of crybabies, and, and I am one, but they're, they are crybabies, you know. You can't get people to work. Huh? Y'all dying. It's still the truth. Unholy. Unholy. Do you not think that? That's one of the signs, Brother Ray. They're unholy. They think anything. The stuff that they put on TV right now, when you and I were kids, they wouldn't have left that on television for no amount of money. Hmm? Because they're unholy. Huh? Huh? I'm just saying. See, look at what else he says. I'm getting ready to close here. He said, hold that fast. Hold that fast which thou hast. In other words, you need to secure what you believe. You need to get in this book, not because Brother Doug says so, but because he says so and it's true. I haven't caught him saying nothing that ain't so. But I mean, you need to know for yourself. You know, you kind of like that uh, one person I met. I said, what do you believe? He said, I believe what my church believes. I said, well, what do they believe? He said, they believe what I believe. I said, well, hallelujah, let's get on something else. Huh? You need to secure. Don't be tossed about with whatever. You know, the. I'm going to say this, and it's probably going to... The biggest damage that's been done to Christianity has been done through Christian television. You, <clears throat> let's, let's take a stroll down Christian television. We had uh, <laughs> Jim and Tammy. Everybody investing in their whatever that was called out there. People that give, they, I know people that give their tithes to them. Very, boy, it's quiet in here. I was going to see if the Pope had walked in. I'm just telling you the truth. They didn't know enough to know that the, our ties coming right here. I wouldn't give nothing to Trinity Broadcasting. Not 25 years ago, not 25 years in the future. Why? Because I don't believe none of the junk they're preaching. I don't, the only tongue I have is this one, and I ain't speaking in something else. Uh, you need to get in this book, and so do I, and know exactly what we believe, because I'm going to tell you something. It's going to get harder and harder to find people that preach the truth. And you better watch, or you'll get knocked off of your foundation. Uh, the Bible says, if the foundation be fallen, what shall the righteous do? Uh, what shall the righteous do? The foundations, that's the core of what we believe. Uh, now, I, I'll be honest with you, I love it when it gets on, shouting and stuff, I love that. But I'm going to tell you something, if you don't watch it, you'll think that's all there is to church. That ain't all there is to church. There's times that, that you'll need to come in here, Brother Christian, and your daddy gets up here and preaches, and there's no shouting. You know what you need? You need to listen to what he's saying. You know why? Because some faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Well, you need to be here so you can hear what the preacher says, so you can secure what you believe. Amen. These people, they just blown around. I've seen people, they'll go to the Baptist church one week, to Church of God, uh, the Christian church. Do you know there ain't none of them teach the same? How can you do that? Because they're unstable. They don't get in this book, and if it just feels good, do it. No, sir. No, sir. It ain't about your feelings. This is not a walk of feelings. This is a walk of faith. Mm. Well, if the Lord is coming, and He's coming soon, we need to be separated from this world. Uh, you need to look like a Christian. Huh? Amen. <laughs> so what does a Christian look like? Well, 
Jordan looks like one. Huh? Brian looks like one. Josh looks like one. I'll be honest with you, everybody in here looks like one. But uh, <clears throat> these long-haired Christian singers, they don't look like one. You know, because the Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Am I not telling the truth here? Amen. If I had hair, it wouldn't be long. Huh? You need to dress right. You need to talk right. Huh? The talk that you talk in here needs to be the same talk when you get out on the job. Huh? You know what, Brother Tommy, at my work, I've been there 22 years. There's nobody that I've worked with could ever go to anybody and say, well, I've heard Ron Little cuss. Never. Because my language in here is the same as it is out there and out there and in here. The only difference is they make me madder than you all do. Dealing with a bunch of lost people. You know. But you know what? It's, it's one thing to be separated. But see, you've got to realize here's the key to this thing. If you're going to be separated from the world, that ain't enough. You've got to be separated to God. You've got to be, let God be the one who directs your path. You know, you need to behold, our Lord is coming. What manner of man should we be? Knowing the terror of the Lord. Do you know what? He's watching us, Brother Tommy. And you know what he demands? Our best. He don't, he don't demand me to be better than Brian. He demands me to be my best. Amen. Brother Josh, you come. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.